Hello everybody, Bill Harrison here with Harden Power Systems. Wanted to shoot a brief video, um, a uh, more of an instructional video really, explaining what you'll receive when you get your HAP, um, what you need to do with it to get on the air, and uh, a couple of brief explanations about uh, getting inside the machine and uh, swapping out the dongle and swapping out the, uh, the antenna uh, remote and things like that. So in any event, uh, this is the machine a lot of you uh, if you're watching this video, I suppose you've purchased one and you're thinking about it, um, but uh, much better probably than a, a printed manual. At, at least we can communicate a lot of information and do it pretty quickly and, and uh, do it in a way most folks understand. When you get your system, um, it'll come like this, and the first thing you're going to want to do is open it up. We use some stainless steel Phillips screws that hold the housing in position and there are uh, a couple of arrows and some verbiage telling you which screws to back out but in any event once we've done that we'll slide the housing away and expose the inside of the DHAP now in this case of course there's a, a DHAP there um, or I'm sorry a, a DVAP dongle already in place um, so when you get your machine It'll look like that. You take your DVAP, plug it in. There's a small piece of foam here that serves to uh, to dampen vibration and to kind of pinch the DVAP in position. So you'll want to push this direction, compress that foam, and rock the DVAP down into its well. And you can see that when it's done correctly, that dongle is not going anywhere, it's secure, it's real happy where it's at. Um, so now that we've done that, and, and we'll leave the cover off um, while we're doing some of the other stuff, uh, just m might save a step uh, here in a few minutes. Um, in any case, the first thing you'll need to do is to power the machine up and put in your call sign and the frequency that you want to use. In order to do that, you need some sort of uh, uh, way, of course, of interfacing with the, the computer. Um, in our case, uh, you know, this is just, and this is some pretty neat stuff that's, that's become more common, uh, an inexpensive backup monitor meant for a vehicle. Uh, the reason we like it, it runs on 12 volts, and uh, it's compact, and I'll tell you, this little thing you know, works fine, and uh, I don't think we paid 30 bucks, I think like $27, $28 for this. Um, so we're going to take this, we're going to plug the... DC power in into the back of the DHAP. Now this is a little unusual. We do this whenever we can with our equipment. Um, uh, this is not only the charging port. Since it's a direct wire to the battery bank, it also provides 12 volts out if for some reason you need a small amount of 12 volt power. Um, in this case, we do. We're going to run our monitor off the DHAP while it's, uh, it's, it's running the, uh, the dongle and, and the computer. Um, and then we take the the RCA video in for our little monitor and we plug it into the video out. We could of course choose to use the uh, the HDMI port if we had an HDMI uh, uh, unit. Um, and we also have, and this is another uh, example of what are becoming more common and, and, and less expensive, this I think was about twenty dollars. It's a wireless keyboard with a little trackpad. It comes with a dongle which is plugged into the USB port of the Pi. So now that we are plugged in, we're going to turn on the power switch to the DVAP. Once we do that, the Pi begins to boot up. And it takes a minute. And of course you have your, uh, your call sign and the frequency you want handy. Um, use a, a keyboard like this or just a, a regular keyboard, plug it right into the USB port. Um, the, uh, the imaged SD card, which incidentally is going to be inside your machine, and it looks like this, will automatically boot to the, uh, the DVAP uh, uh, tools uh, configuration screen. And I'll see if you can if you can see this well enough. The menu pops up saying that there are no gateways found. Um, so of course, you know, all you need to do 
is to put your call sign here and the frequency you want here and hit OK and your machine's ready to go and get you on the air. So having said that we're going to unplug our monitor get our keyboard out of the way we're going to power down the machine um, okay uh, one of the uh, one of the things that some people are going to want to do occasionally is to connect the pigtail to the antenna uh, on the, the dongle now real easy to do we're going to remove our DVAP. We're going to unscrew the little stubby antenna that comes with it. We're then going to release this chassis so it can swivel up and allow us access. Now, one of the things, if you guys are, are, uh, are familiar with the, uh, the, the video that we used to launch the DVAP, this machine looks a little bit different. Um, uh, I, I'm happy to say it looks, frankly, better. Um, the machine that was used for that first video that was that was uh, that was published about a week ago was what uh, is, is what we'd call an S2 build. It was the last generation of prototype prior to uh, production launch, prior to a production version. The machine you're looking at now is the uh, the P1. It's the production build, um, and it's representative of the one that you'll actually receive. Um, there have been some small refinements. It's it's uh, they're improvements. It's nice. Um, one of the improvements is that when you back this screw out in order to release the chassis and swivel it up, you'll notice the RCA and the audio cable are now routed along the top of this chassis and then into the internal. And that allows you, without having to unplug anything, to swivel the machine open and access the, uh, the internals. Um, Okay, so if you look in here, I know it looks like a mess. Um, it's actually quite clean for, uh, for as many things that are going on. You'll notice right here, there's a little pigtail for the antenna. Now what I'm going to do is route that up. And I'm going to poke it through. That hole right there. I think you can see that. Now I take my dongle, thread it on to that pigtail, plug in, and that's it. Now you've got the DVAP remoted to the SMA, SMA antenna out. Um, the only thing I guess I would I would caution folks about is, you know, this is a, a nice little cable. It's uh, for what it is, it's it's fairly stiff, um, and when you stow this, if it's not in use, please don't just let it hang out like this where it can rattle around. It's metal, of course, on the end where it can touch things and pinch and get in the way. Where it wants to live is underneath here. Like this. It kind of just hangs out in a space back there, nice and straight, the way it, like, it wants to be. Um, and let's see anything else while we have the case open. Um, there really isn't much here for the for the user to be concerned with. Um, one one thing I would say is that uh, I, I can anticipate an area of concern when you go to close the hap right about here before it's completely closed. It wants to fight back a little bit. Now go ahead and and pinch this enough to to close this because you can't shoot this screw until the chassis is completely closed. And don't be shy about pinching that, because what you're really doing is just squeezing some of the cables 
you know, there, there's a lot going on inside there, and there's a lot of cables that overlap one another, um, and uh, they just need to be uh, to be held down. Um, so, uh, let me think, what else? Um, remoting the antenna. We talked about the worldwide charger. Um, how to put the DVAP in and out. The keyboard operation with the little monitor. I'm assuming that there's something that I'm forgetting, but I'm not sure what it would be. Um, uh, I guess one of the uh, one of the the, the things that's kind of neat is uh, because this is a native 12 volt system. Um, within reason, you can charge it or run it off of a vehicle. Um, it's a nickel metal hydride battery, so don't go crazy leaving it unattended if you're charging it in that manner. Um, and in theory, you could shorten the overall cycle life of the nickel metal hydride if you were charging it with something other than a, uh, a charging voltage um, that's intended for nickel metal hydride. But when you're, when you're in the field and need to make it work, no, well, you make it work. Um, okay. Uh, well, I guess. Let's put the cover back on. Um, <clears throat> there's a, uh, a slot here that the cover engages. And I'm sure you'd figure this out if you were putting this together. But you get the slot in, and once you've done that, you can push, and it takes some takes some pressure, push and, and close the lid. And once you've done that, then go ahead and shoot these screws back down. And you are good to go. Um, Thanks everybody for your time and your attention. Come see us at PortableUniversalPower.com, our Facebook and uh, and Twitter and YouTube accounts are all Heart and Power. Uh, we appreciate the interest and uh, we're uh, we're really delighted to be able to offer this machine. It's uh, it's neat after so much work to uh, to uh, to be to be gearing up to ship a whole bunch of these things all over the world. It's fabulous. So thanks again. This is Bill Harrison, 73, everybody. Bye-bye.